I want to thank Jesus for delivering me. In 1969, graduates from the men and women's home, they witnessed to me in a drug program. I went for help. I wanted to, to live a different life. I wasn't looking for the Lord. I just wanted to live. I, was, I didn't want to be busted and be loaded all the time. And so they told me about a drug program, and I went there, and there were some real good guys that were famous in our neighborhood from L.A. County. But in there, I didn't know there was graduates from Victory Temple. 1969. And you know, they made an intake on me. Different times I went and they said, Mondo, we're going to help you with, the, with what the program offers. But they said, I want to let you know that Jesus loves you. They said, Jesus Christ is a healer. It started witnessing. I, I was a heroin addict and Jesus detoxed me in a twinkling of an eye. And then they started bragging about their pastor. Pastor Sonny and Julie and he was a heroin addict. This is 1969. I don't even know how to act. You know what they're doing? They're releasing seed. They're releasing the word of God so that the Holy Ghost has a highway to be able to travel to my heart, to my mind, to my, where I lived. And so not only did they brag about their pastors, but they bragged about their temple, Victory Temple. And the reason why I'm saying this to you is that I want you to be a people that you brag about your Jesus every day. And that you brag about your pastor. Pastor Joe and Doreen, every day that you have an opportunity, brag about them. And brag about your outreach, the local church that's under the influence of the Holy Ghost. See? Brag about them. And so I'm grateful because if it wouldn't have been for those courageous Christians that were not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Second Chronicles, when you have it, Second Chronicles, I think I left my glasses right there, yeah. Let me see those. Okay. I'm not going to take too much time. Because the Spirit of God is going to continue to move uh, behind Pastor Joe's. He shared his heart. He says, he says God is going to do great things. We're on our way to being a mega church. A mega church is only for the reason that there's too many people getting loaded. Too many people want to kill themselves. Too many people don't have the answer that, that there, is a, there is an answer. There's too many people getting divorced. They don't want to get married. They're dealing drugs. They're working for the cartel. Their families have been bound generation after generation to the three big C things that I call. One is immorality. Two is getting loaded. And three is partying. And that their, sub, their children has suffered generation after generation, even though they didn't grow up that way. The kids didn't grow up that way. They could have went to college. They could be business people. But because of their family suffering, the mighty hand of the devil upon their lives, that God has given us the privilege, Victory Outreach, as members of the body of Christ, me and you, I'm encouraging you. You heard Pastor Joe tell us this morning that, that we needed to help each other. Well, in the book of, of, a number of, uh, of uh, Romans chapter 12, it speaks about members of the body of Christ. That me and you are members of the body of Christ. Those that aren't saved, they will have a chance to become members. But the ones that are saved, we are members one of another. And not only are we members one of another, but we're, we're people that have a different function. God has given us something to do different. And not only has he given us a different assignment, 
but he's given, he's placed us where he wants us to be. He'll, he has a place for you. Are you at that place that God wants you to be? Or have you been scared? Have you been ignoring it? Have you, been, have you just been enjoying the benefits of Christianity? And not putting in work for the master? Thinking that you, you'll do it tomorrow. No, you got to do it right away. Why am I preaching to you this way? It's because the only way that we're going to be able to do what Pastor Joe needs for us to do is that we need the spirit of revival. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. The same delivering power that delivered me in 1976 of getting loaded, of being an immoral man and, and, and parting that same experience of the supernatural power because I've experienced that and I'm saying it. It is being transmitted unto those that need it. The encouragement of those people that need encouragement. It is being transmitted by us to each other because we are members of the body of Christ and we are anointed. I want to tell you more about it. But I'm, I'm just trying to flow with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Oh, thank you. Yes. Imagine I was loaded for 20 years. From the age of 14, I made a decision. I like getting loaded. So I said, I'm going to get loaded every day. So from age, at the age of 15, I made a commitment to get loaded. That's in, in, in when I was 34, 20 years later, I, I didn't know that God was going to deliver me. But when I made the decision, finally, when I, I didn't accept the Lord, I just knew because I had a divine visitation. When, when these brothers witnessed to me two years later, I got hired on that job. And I wasn't getting loaded on heroin, and I wasn't like, a, like a getting busted or anything like that. But I was smoking grass every day. Horning a little bit of coke, uh, uh, representing people in court. I was under the influence of, of, of uh, acid, Taiwan sticks, reporting to work, smoking a joint, and going in front of the judge. Your Honor, give him a chance. Your Honor, give her an opportunity so that my client can have a chance to live a life like I'm living. So I thought I was going to die that way. I thought I made it. I wasn't getting busted. I met Arlene. We got married. I wasn't using hard drugs that put you in jail. But what did God do? After I got hired, he sends a home director to witness in the drug ward that I was working. And that, that director was hardcore from Kern Maravilla, uh, El Calqui de Maravilla. And then another guy that was from El Paso, he was a drug dealer, Veli del Paso, EPT. And they were bragging about their Jesus. And as they were bragging about Jesus, you know what happened? Something jumped me. They're talking to the guys and girls kicking, and I'm just there listening to them. And all of a sudden, I felt something jump me. And that scared me. I had, I had never, I've been under the influence, I've been jumped by different guys. I've thrown blows in jail, and, but I never got jumped by the Holy Ghost. And when I felt the presence, I got scared. Oh, man. Now I realize that, that a, 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 an unclean vessel has to shake at the presence of God. A sinner that's no good, an immoral person that has lived his life when the holy God comes and lowers himself in the sin, all of a sudden that creator, that creator shows up. Creation knows who the creator is. Nobody had to introduce me and say that was God. Create the cre cre those that are creatures know the creator. And I heard a voice. This is what he said. Serve me and I'll give you peace. And right away I knew it was God, and I knew church. I wasn't ready. Imagine. 
I knew it was God. He said, serve me and I'll give you peace. And I wasn't ready. And in his mercy, he left after two days when I was going insane. Because you can't stand the presence of a, of, of a beautiful God. But when he left, I came back to life like... It's almost like when you're overdosing, when you're overdosing on heroin, you're overdosing and you're crashing in, bam, and you know you're going to, if you stop, you know you're going to die, wham, and, and all of a sudden, I felt this presence lift, and I came back to life, but in his mercy, he didn't change his summons, serve me, and I'll give you peace, so when the time came, that I made a decision, I thought of it. And I said, if I'm coming in, I ain't leaving. That's, that was my attitude. I said, if I'm coming in to God, I ain't leaving. And that's how I came in. I came in, I said, Lord, here I come. And the guys taught me, repent of your sins, ask forgiveness. And my boy was five years old, Mondo, and he laid hands on me. And when he laid hands on me, I ran to the toilet and threw up some green stuff. Those had to be demons. The demonic, uh, th those were, it was ugly. I said, who would, who would have known that there could have been demons inside of me? But the delivering power of God, I am a testimony of the witness of God. I said, deliver. I'm a witness of the miraculous power of God. I'm able to transmit it because I can be a, a vessel that brags about the healer. I can be used as a transmitter to encourage somebody that's struggling with pornography, that's to, struggling with addictions, that's struggling with pains of their life and heart condition, emotional condition, and the, the condition of the will. God can use me and you because we are members of the body of Christ. Now, let me just share with you, and I'm going to finish, okay? And so I came in to Victory Outreach delivered. I was crying. I didn't even know I, didn't even know I was supposed to go to church. I didn't know. There were linguists going seven months, but I didn't know I was supposed to go to church because I had been delivered. I knew that I got delivered. I didn't have a hunger to be immoral. I didn't have a hunger anymore to get loaded. And, and it made me cry. I said, how could God pick a nobody? And so I've been thankful to God because he raised me up to be a nobody, to tell somebody, yeah. huh? that, 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 to, to tell them about the, somebody who can save anybody. So it's better to be a nobody telling everybody about somebody who can save anybody. See? And so in that gratefulness, it's, it's God, that deliverance, I, I, I didn't want to, I, I didn't want to lose it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to waste it. The spirit of revival fell upon my life. The, the, the stirring of the Holy Ghost. Look at here. Verse, Second Chronicles chapter, the last chapter. It goes like this. Verse 22. This is what it shows. It shows revival. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah a prophecy given 70 years before about Israel might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus, King of Persia. When, when, when the stirring takes place, it's something like this. It's something like this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a spirit of revival. That's upon victory outreach in this third wave generation, which is not just a gang. It's the, it's the gang is running with it, yes. It's their turn to get down with their good selves. See, 
It's the time of the gang. It's a, they're part of the third wave. The third wave are people coming in of all ages that God has, a, has, a, has a stirred the hearts of people through revival. And that stirring of revival is upon us as members of the body of Christ. Now, what happened to this king? He's the one that let the Jews free because it was prophesied that he was that he that they were going to be freed 70 years of bondage being in slavery and this king they said he wasn't even saved but God stirred his heart you imagine how do you think me and Arlene have made it we we learned to honor revival we learned to you know how you take care of revival so you don't lose it you brag about your your salvation to somebody every day that you can. Two, you tell people that you're a Christian. Yes, with boldness. And three, you tell them you're a servant of God. Now, when people don't do that, revival leaves them until the next service or until the next time they have prayer with God. And God decides to send revival again. So can you imagine how many times he sent revival to our church and a lot of the members of the body of Christ, they don't help us. And look at, you are brothers and sisters one to another. You have been gifted. Me and you, you know that we're not by ourselves. we got the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The angelic, the heavenly host is in our sight. Not only that, we have the powerful word of God that shows us a map of life, that shows us what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do, how to get healed, how to help others. And not only that, we are part of the church of the living God, the richest resource known to mankind because of you and I, of our experience of life. We can help anybody that comes to church because each one of us has experienced something great. But as members of the body of Christ, you have been given gifts. And, and, and as members, we're to care for one another. Corinthians speaks about it. And the gifts are to be used for one another. You know what that means? That means that when we come to church, we should be talking to each other and then and when you laying hands on one another and then hanging around outside and hanging around in the parking lot and hanging around in the foyer and being out there in front of the street and talking to people. Because if not, we're just going to pray for each other. We're going to get healed. We're going to get encouraged. But the world keeps going by in the alley and the world keeps going by on Greenlee. And the world keeps going to the show and people are walking with their families and they're walking right in front of us and we're anointed. And we have exampleship of Pastor Sonny and Julie. 53 years, they're still talking about Jesus. They're still praying, they're still believing. And so us as a body of Christ, me and you, I am so blessed to be with you. I left my church that I was there for 41 years. I was with my pastor for 23 years, and I was with his son for 19 years. I didn't think I was going to leave my church, but I came over here and I saw the, the Italian. <laughs> I saw him hollering. You better not forget about it, you know? I saw him hollering, and I've known him for 38 years. You heard him. I've known him a long time. But I saw him, and he reminded me of my pastor. He reminded me of Pastor Sonny. That, that, that's, why, that's why. And, and, and because I'm used to a pastor that cares about people that have gotten loaded in their families. I'm not saying that my other pastors didn't. No. My founder is the one that started this. His son was kicking it off after his dad. But I didn't meet somebody like Pastor Joe that was insane, <laughs> that was in local in the local church, that wanted to give his life and do everything he could to help his founder. 
his father-in-law, his pastor, that he was willing to sacrifice his life and, and, and train his people so that his people would be trained in the art of reaching out to people. Not only reaching out to people, but discerning what people's needs are. To be able to look and to discern and to identify what the needs of people are and then meet those needs. See, that's what makes us professional uh, disciples is that when we learn to be able to meet somebody and figure out what their need is and then ask them, is this your need? And they say, yeah, will you, will you allow me to help you? And you know what the need was? Is that the house is demon possessed. Who wants to go to a house where there's demons? See, you know what the need was? Is that the husband was a lesbian. It was a female. And, the, and they came to church. You know what the need was? Is that the, the husband just came out of prison. And you know, in one of the houses that we went to, it was a perfect house. Oh, they were dressed nice, and the house smelled nice, and, 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 and they offered, and we said, man, let's have a Bible study here. But you know what the need was? Is that they wanted somebody to help them learn how to read the Bible. And their need was is that they had family who were dying of cancer. And, you know, they were bringing that up, and we couldn't shine it on and ignore it. Who's dying of cancer? And no, it's like, who's dying of cancer? Will you allow, can we go pray for her? And we went in there with assurance. We didn't know that God was going to heal. All we knew, we had the privilege in the name of Jesus to represent the high God, the healer. All we knew is that we were gifted. We had been set apart from God and brought into a unique ministry. A ministry like there's no other, like our ministry, and it's all over the world. I've traveled all over the world, brothers and sisters, not just behind the pulpits, but in the neighborhoods and where people are dealing and with the cartel and the people that work with the cartel, with the, the godfathers of those countries. I've been to those places. I've seen the family in bondage, the Irishmen, the terrorists of the countries of the world. Because why? God called us to reach gang members. And he called us to reach their families as well. And he called us to reach drug addicts and their families. And the families come of all walks of life. Isn't that beautiful? That you, that, why do you think I love you so much? Because you're here with Pastor Joe. And, and, uh, and you care for Pastor Joe and Doreen. And so I say, they can help me. I'm 77 years old. They can help me do my ministry. Amen. If you don't help me and you don't allow me to share, then I'm not going to learn from you. I'm not going to know what's current in your life or in your family. I'm not going to know how to bring this word of God so that it's relevant to your life. I'm not going to know what to talk about. I'm not going to know how to talk to young people. And, and this, this shows you, when I came and I called my pastor and I said, Pastor, uh, we're thinking about going with, with Joe and Doreen. What do you think? He said, Mom, as long as you're happy. And uh, it's all right with me. So he said, just tell my son that you talk to me and it'll be all right. Okay. And so the next thing you know, that's what I did. And when I came over here, I knew I was going to kick it with Ryan Kuklinski. You know how you know how you know how I knew I'm his godfather. I didn't give him stuff that I wanted to give him when he was a little crumb hustler. See? When he was a little guy, I, I I didn't have what I wanted to give him finances and buy him clothes and so I said I'm going to give him what his grandpa gave me in this outreach what this community that I've lived in and this whole victory outreach and everything I've learned in life from the word of God, I'm going to do my best to be there for him. And so that's what I did is I hooked up. I'm from the gang. They, they don't believe me. They said, you're too old to be a gang member. 
I said, I wasn't a gang member. I was a neighborhood boy, but now I'm part of the gang. I said, I kick it with Ryan Kanklinski. And so what, is, what am I trying to do? This is how, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help my pastor personally because I help him by preaching all over the world. It helps him because I talk about this vision. I talk about his heart. But I want to help him by helping Pastor Joe. And to help Pastor Joe, I'm helping Ryan, Pastor Ryan. So I dedicated myself to help Pastor Ryan, and that makes me feel good that I'm helping Pastor Joe because how did I know the third wave was going to pop up? How did I know that, that, the, that the leader of the gang in Whittier was going to be a pastor, and then all of a sudden he was going to be the international pastor? I didn't know that. And so that's how I felt that God set it up. Now, am I just concerned for the gang? No. I'm concerned for you. I want to do with my wife and I, whatever you need to help you work through your issues and get close to your leadership and to God and into the Bible so that you could do the work that God has given you to do. So that you could be that pastor's wife. So you could be that leader in your church. And so we're here for you. And uh, God put that in my heart to share it. And the, the main thing that he put in my heart is this. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm working with some young men. And I'm just, I'm just showing them three things. Simple things that Jesus showed. Three simple things. Read their Bible. Apply the word of God. Keep memorizing scripture. Meditate. Keep reading the Bible. Keep changing. And pray. Pray. Get close to your God. Get close to him because you have to get close to him. And then reach out. So I'm teaching the youngsters. They reach out, but they don't reach out enough. See, my way of reaching out is if I meet you and I'm talking to you and your husband or your kids, I'm going to want to go visit your house. Because that's the only way that I'm going to see what you're really going through. I'm not going to see everything here in church or in a Bible study or in a victory center or what you tell me. No, it's when we knock on that door. I'm knocking on that door in behalf of, of Pastor Joe and Doreen, in behalf of Ryan Konklinski and Britt. That's why I'm knocking on that door, because I want to see what is it that we can help. That's what Jesus did. He took his disciples after he got into prayer in front of them for three and a half years. And then he had already memorized scriptures, Bible uh, books that were written in his time. He memorized many of the books, uh, excuse me, scriptures of those books. So he knew after prayer what he was going to teach them on the way to Capenarium. He knew what he was going to teach them on the way to the Samaritan woman. He knew the Bible said he was going to give them to go to the pool where that man was 38 years, nine years, and the woman that had the issue of blood, 12, he knew what he was going to share with them. And so he did this for three and a half years, is that he was relational with his father through, through the word and prayer, and he took them out to evangelize and follow up. And then he loved to fellowship. So that's what I'm going to teach the guys and the girls. We're going to, we're, whoever wants it is a criteria is that do you want to get down to help your Jesus? Do you want to learn this? If you do, then sign up and we're going to, we're going to, because we're not just going to be in a classroom. It's not just going to be in a classroom in a church. There will be times that we'll be at the park. We want to be close to the community. I want to take them close to the community. I want to get them out of the church. 
I want to get them close to where the need is at, where people are kicking it, where the skaters are at, where, where, where the, the bikers are at, where the Aryan Brotherhood, where the cribs and the bloods are at, wherever they may live around here, where the goody goodies are at, where the college students are at, where the skaters are at. They know because they're young, they'll take me. I don't know where it's at, but I learned to lead by following young people. I've learned that. I'm going to lead by following them. And they will take me to these places. And so it's my way. Of, I know this work because I applied it for four and a half years as a Bible study leader. And our Bible study grew to 60 in four and a half years. And we put out four Bible studies. Three couples in the same city and a shot caller into Big Bassett. And so it worked. And so you know how I started? Is that I couldn't go back to Pastor Sonny and say, Pastor Sonny, what you taught me, um, I only got 10 people. Well, how long have you been out there? Two years. 10 people. I couldn't tell him that. So I was scared. Right away, before I went out, I was scared when he said, Banda, I want you to start a Bible study. I, I, I was scared, but I knew where I was going to start it because the church moved across the street from my neighborhood, where I was from for 20 years. And so I knew that if I didn't go out on Sundays, that, that I, if I go out on a Sunday, I'm going to go anoint it. I'm going to make the altar call. And I'm going to be determined. I said, I'm going out this Sunday, no matter what party, no matter what fellowship, unless pastor tells me he wants me there. And so I went out and I started learning how to go out every other Sunday for a couple of hours. And nobody cared about the, the, the word, but people started hearing about Jesus. And they started coming to the Bible study, and they started giving their life to God. And the next thing you know, we were there four and a half years in about five neighborhoods in there. And God brought in shot callers. He brought in people that, that, that would say, you have anything against Mando? You're going to have to go through me. And, and they were dangerous guys. And the other guys were killers. And they would say, yes, sir. Why? Because Pastor Sonny taught us, get the big fish. He taught us, get the big, go after the big fish, and then the little fish will come. Go after that, that, that family member, that's a big fish. Go after that mom that's open. Go after that cousin of that person that their, their loved one is in Pelican Bay in the shoe. Go after that one that looks insignificant. That is a big fish because they'll bring in all the fishes. And so, and my encouragement is to use that you feel the power of God upon your life to take you into another level in 2020. And you want to help your pastor and Doreen and you want to do what God has called you to do. And you want to be effective. And you want to get in there and help people. And you don't want to run away from the call. Is there anybody here like that? Then let's stand. Yes. Let's stand. I thank God for Michael and Eddie. I'm, I'm 77 years old. I get dizzy. I got, I got vertical. Sometimes I get real, real dizzy, and they had to hold me up after I preach. But I learned something. I'm not dead. I learned from my pastor, Sonny. He's not dead. So he still does, even though he's not well. But God called him to do it because he don't want it to go down on his watch. That people are overdosing out of, in, in fentanyl and heroin in the East Coast. He don't want it to go down on his watch that there wasn't rehab homes that don't work. 
He doesn't want it to go down on his watch that there's not people out there living out there that have been trained that are going to go out and witness to heroin addicts and their families. And so that taught me. I, I was saying I'm too old to do this and do that. And I heard somebody say, don't say you're too old. You ain't dead. You're still alive. And I said, man, what a dummy I am. I'm saying I'm too old. That's like saying the Holy Ghost ain't got power. That the Holy Spirit can't stir us up. That the Spirit can't move, move us. Even if we're in a wheelchair, God can move through a person on a wheelchair. He's able to communicate. He, they, they're able to look. They're able to pray for somebody. They're able to be out there. They can be a witness. And so this encouragement is for you. That whoever you are, if I've, I've, I've had to learn how to get through my wife, had six operations since 2002 of hernias. And I didn't know if she was going to live. So I had to learn how to take care of her. You know how hard it is to take care of your wife when you've been used to just taking care of yourself? You have to learn. Or you're, you, you have a calling to preach the gospel all over the world, and you can't go all over the world. You have to just go close because your wife needs you. And you've been used to going six weeks to England. You've been used to going so many weeks to Mexico and preaching out there. And, and then all of a sudden, the Lord shows you and says, no, you have to take care of her. If you don't take care of her, I don't want her to hurt and suffer. I'll take her. If you want her, take care of her. If not, I'm going to take her. So, man, I said, I have to learn how to take care of my wife and be there for her. And the next thing you know, I felt like a, like a big dummy. I'm talking to my friends, a big preacher. Oh, uh, yeah, wait a minute. I had a mandil. I'm washing dishes. Wait a minute. I got to go put another load. And I'm in there, put another load and talking, you know, the big preacher talking about taking the world. And there he is uh, burning the pancakes and things like that. But it was all right because it represents where many of us are at in our life. Fear has gripped us. Or we didn't think we were worth that. You are so worth everything. You're a member of the body of Christ. You are worth it. You're of high value to God, to Pastor Sonny, to Joe and Doreen, to the leadership, the ministerial staff. Oh, you're worth it. Do we value you and your family highly. We could not make it without you. You are our ministry. You are the call that God gave us to do for him. So you are of high value, no matter your condition, no matter your situation. 